Hi, I'm Sultana Jones. I've been reading from my book, The Diary of Leanne Little. And uh, in order to get caught up, you have to go back to the very beginning of the story that I was reading. And um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and see where we left off. The days in my little room ain't so bad. Sometimes the nights get lonely. And I have to say, maybe I'm a little scared too. I wonder if Sarah Jean thinks about me like I do her. Listen, I can hear the angels again. Well, I'll stop for now. I know Papa will be back soon. I looked at John and said, this book is our history. John just nodded his head and fought back the tears. I took the diary downstairs and laid it on the kitchen table because the work we had to do then. The phones were being installed, the painters came while molders were banging outside, restoring the outer look and John had a meeting with the hospital downtown so we put the book on hold for a while. Weeks turned into months before I picked up the little book again. That evening John walked in and I greeted him with a smile and I said to him, I was waiting for you to start reading again are you ready? He nodded his head and I quickly opened the book and read. War's getting closer to happening. Mr. McClay and Papa and some of the townsmen are talking about it in the reading room. While me and Sarah Jean were in the library listening Mama would sit working on a new quilt. She called it a family quilt. She took a bit of everyone's garment here on the land and was making a story out of each piece. As Mama sewed, it reminded me of a time when we needed blankets and more blankets. It was when the fever hit. Ned was the first to, the first to go down was Ned, Big Joe's son. He was working in the field picking cotton. This time, he was looking sickly, and then he fell. Sarah Jean was out there too. She was about 12, like me. She ran to get Papa. Master Little, Master Little, come quick. Ned took sick, and so has the others. Papa ran out to the field. It's the fever. Get the wagon. We'll put them in the barn. Mama, fetch all the blankets you can find, and boil some water. And Joe, fetch Doc Avery. Tell him fever's hit. Mama, take Leanne Little out of here. Then, as I turned to, to go, I saw Sarah Jean fall, and I ran back to her, holding her in my arms, and I said, Sarah Jean, Sarah Jean. And Papa ran over to me and pulled her, pulled her from my arms and said, get in the house. Everything seemed to happen so fast. I was whisked off in the house before I could breathe. The next night, Ned died, and four others too. I saw Papa come in the house. I saw tears in his eyes. Papa. He went into the reading room and shut the door. 
And then I heard him say, Dear Lord, I'm not much on words, but I can sure use your help. I heard Mama, Mammy Jo come in the back door. I went to ask her about Sarah Jean. If she was going to be all right. She just looked at me with tears running down her cheeks, mixing in with the sweat on her face. I don't know what happened. I wanted to say something, but the next thing I knew, everything got to spinning around. Later on, I find out from Mammy Jo that I had got the fever and fell out on the kitchen floor. Papa came and got me and carried me to my room, and Mama was sent away on account of the baby. It's funny. Now that I think of it, I could hear angels sing then too. Doc Avery told Papa that I might not make it, but I was young and that was in my favor. I remember waking up hearing Papa praying, Oh God. Please, please help my little girl. Just then I said, How sad, Jean. And with joy shining on his face, he said, She's fine. She's just fine. Now you rest. You give us all the scare. We didn't find out till later I couldn't walk. But not walking didn't stop me none because I was determined to do more for myself than ever. One day when Mama went to town with Mrs. McClay, I painted little yellow flowers all around the grand room. Yellow was Mama's favorite color and mine too. Of course, Sarah Jean helped. We loved it so much, I painted flowers on my bathroom floor, too. Oh, Pop, I must write about Mr. Pete Davis. Thank you for sending him the check on me. It seems as if I had been alone for so long. I was getting awfully scared. And it was just about night time when I heard someone calling my name. Leanne. Leanne. Here I am. Who is it? He said that you had sent him and that he had some food and water for me. He started to remove the little door you had made, Papa. I was so excited. I knew you wouldn't forget about me, Papa. Mr. Pete Davis was blonde hair like me, and he had the kindest eyes and a gentle voice, too. He seemed to talk until I fell asleep. He said he would check on me often. Oh, thank you, Papa. And you know what, Papa? I've decided to finish Mama's family quilt. I sure do miss Mama. I remember when a man carrying a big box came by and he wanted to take our photo. So mama called everyone together. That was fun. I tried to remember what she looked like. 
what she would tell me, she could say something like, now in the end, you will hold your chin up. You're little, and we littles are strong. You know, even littles cry once in a while. I only saw Papa cry two times. Once when the fever hit and he buried Ned and the others. And then, okay, I have to stop here. I'm going to go ahead and read some more in another video. I'll see you in a minute. Bye-bye.